rockin' with the best. Rockin' with the best. Rockin' with the best. Rockin' with the best. With the best. Hi, Living Church. I'm Rhonda Hobbs. And I'm Doug Hobbs. We've been at Living Church for about two years, and we've been married for 37 years. And we're here to talk to you about sex. Well, to tell you the truth, Rhonda and I have had our share of frustrations in our sex lives. And then you put in the impact of what we see in media, television, and the movies. That really helps compound things. When it doesn't work out like you see on the big screen, it can really get frustrating and Sometimes we really wanted to just give up. Sex was created by a loving God who gives good gifts to his children. But um, there are seasons of frustration, and um, I think that some of those seasons are hard to work through, yeah. even in our sexual relationship. I know for us, when you think way back when we were first married, the honeymoon stage, mm -hmm. life was good, it was simple, and the sex was good. Then you layer on, you have kids, uh, you buy a house, maybe there's a job change, job transfer. All these things have put strain on our marriage, which in turn have put a strain on our sex life. One very important thing that Doug and I have uh, worked hard on is um, praying for each other. And praying for even our sexual relationship when we've had struggles has been very important for us. And another um, thing that we've worked hard on is communication, um, talking yep. about pretty much everything. I haven't been comfortable with that. I, you know, tell you the truth, I just wanted to flip the light out and uh, just get busy and let things work themselves out. But as a woman, I like to talk and we have to talk about these things. I guess you think about getting into the bedroom and having an intimate time, but you really have to back up and think about the things that happen during the course of the week. And it's really all about being able to be a giver it's not really about the sexual act, it's everything that leads yeah. up to it. It's the relationship, it's getting the garbage to the street, it's dropping the kids off at school, they're saying, I'll pick the kids up at school. Yeah, it's all of the unspoken things. That, that's how you say I love you, and that's how you say I care. If I would summarize um, the, the things that were most important for us, um, I would say that um, praying together, um, quality time, and communication. Um, I think that's what has made our marriage rock. Even in the bedroom. Even in the bedroom. Boom, boom in the bedroom. <laughs> Man, that's so good. I'm so thankful to our elders that over the last uh, five weeks have been willing to share part of their story yeah. and their testimonies pertaining yeah. to marriage. And man, put your hands together for the Living Church worship team. Wow. 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 So good. Today is Matt Ortiz's birthday. Yeah. And so for his birthday, he, uh, he jammed out. Man, it was so good this morning. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you've been here throughout the series, Marriage Mixtape, we've been talking about how to have a marriage that rocks, about the kind of things that we want to put onto the soundtrack of our yeah. relationship. And me growing up making mixtapes, every once in a while, I'd put a track on a, uh, on a tape that I regretted. And so I had the ability to rewind and re-record over that thing. And we believe that God, the mix master in heaven, wants to rewind some things in our marriage and re-record some new content. Yeah. Right. And so that's the hope of this series. And today, we're talking about sex. Now, throughout the series, every week, I've been starting kind of with a little intro, and I've been having a bunch of props talking about how we can manage our emotions and our feeling and our time. And so I decided that I shouldn't bring too many props uh, this week hey. to talk about sex. And so we, we, we're not going to go the prop no route. Leave no that junk at home, y'all. Leave it at home. <laughs> but we are going to uh, get into some really exciting yes. content. You know, <laughs> I grew up in church, and I heard a lot of marriage series. But a lot of times they would leave out this idea of sex in the series. And I think the reason is because it's kind of awkward. It's a kind of awkward thing to talk yeah. about, first of all, because sex is something you do when you're naked, right. and you're not supposed to be naked at church, right. and so that's kind of that's weird. That's kind of weird. Uh, also, it can feel awkward because everybody's in a different season of life. Right. Yeah. There are people in the room that are single. There are people in the room that are married, and so it's like, how does that work out? Yeah. Who do we speak to? Well, the right. truth is, I believe the Bible speaks to everybody, no matter what season that they're in, yeah. right. and so we can learn from that today. The other reason it's kind of awkward is because the devil has done a really good job at tricking us into thinking that he 
created sex. Right. right. Thinking that sex is something that's evil and dirty and bad and that the devil made it. But the truth is, God created sex. Yeah. That God gave yeah. sex to a man and a woman in the context of right. marriage as a gift. Actually, the first command that God gave all throughout scripture was to have sex. It says yeah. this in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. It says, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, increase in number, and fill the earth and subdue it. His first command was not go and pray, was not go and worship, was let's not go build a church. Let's get it on. His first yeah. command was let's get it on. Just go and get freaky, go and bump right. and grind, get go and on. make a baby, right? Come on. So that's the first thing that God said. And the reason, here's why, is our God is an intimate God. He yeah. wants to have an intimate relationship with us. And so he gave us this gift of intimacy so we could have it with each other. Yeah. So you know, so today we're going to talk about sex and look at um, a scripture of, of the, that is in the Bible that tells us kind of the details of how we should have our relationships in our life. It's uh, in 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul, he's writing to the church at Corinth. He's answering some questions, so it's likely that the church of Corinth asked him some questions right. like, hey, uh, how, how do we go about this Christian thing the right way? How do we yeah. do it right and not wrong? And so they had some questions about what is right in life as it relates to sex. And so we're going to look at the message version because it's a little more um, practical of an application today for our purposes. And so uh, in 1 Corinthians 7 verses 1 through 5, he's answering their question. So it's the question is first, is it a good thing to have sexual relations? And so he says, certainly, but only within a certain context. It's good for a man to have a wife and for a woman to have a husband. Sexual drives are strong, but marriage is strong enough to contain them and provide for a balanced and fulfilling sexual life in a world of sexual disorder. The marriage bed must be a place of mutuality, the husband seeking to satisfy his wife and the wife seeking to satisfy her husband. Marriage is not a place to stand up for your rights. But marriage is a decision to serve the other, whether in bed or out. Abstaining from sex is permissible for a period of time if you both agree to it. And if it's for the purposes of prayer and fasting, but only for such times, then come back together again. Because Satan has an ingenious way of tempting us when we least expect it. So good. There's a lot of richness to that. Right. And, and so what we're going to do today is take that passage and break it down so it's more digestible. Yeah. Right? And uh, as we walk through it, we're going to try to make sure we understand this through the lens of what the Bible says a Absolutely. healthy sexual relationship with your spouse looks like. Yeah. Right. yeah. So let's start with the first verse, right? First uh, Corinthians 7, 1, it says, first, it, is it a good thing to have sexual relations? So he's, he's uh, describing their question. He's restating it, right? And he answers it, certainly but only within a certain context. Mm, certainly. That's my favorite part. Certainly. Right. certainly. Hey, so everybody in the room, repeat after me. Sex is a good thing. Sex, Sex is, is a, a good, good thing. thing. It is a good thing. It's so good. So good. Stop. I will stick to the script. <laughs> it says it right there in the scripture, but in a certain context, right? right? So we've got to make sure we, we really emphasize that caveat. Because That's we right. want to make sure that it is within a certain context. He tells us that in the following verse, 1 Corinthians 7, 2, it says, it's good for a man to have a wife, for a woman to have a husband. Sexual right. drives are strong, but marriage is strong enough to contain them and provide for a balance of fulfilling sexual life in a world of sexual disorder. Sex is sex, and sexual disorder is, a, is similar to what it is the, these days to right. 2,000 years ago. There was craziness back then, things that were uh, being misconstrued right. and, and taken the wrong way. Yeah. And so we need to understand that as we walk through this, that we've got to make sure we stay within those confines. Yeah, right. So as Paul's writing this, he doesn't understand that God created us. Right. right. So God made man and women, and he put inside of us sexual desires. This right. is not something that's wrong. It's not something we need to try to pray away. Right. right. It's something right. that he put inside of us. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so he did that so that our marriages could be passionate, right. so that our relationships could be exciting and energetic and full of fire. And so right. that fire, fire, right. give right. me all the fire. Right. right. And so that's what <laughs> yes. that's what God put in us. But you know, somewhere along the way in my life, I heard this illustration that they said that fire is really powerful in containment. Right. That right. when you put fire in a container, it's beneficial. When there's a fire inside the cylinder head of your engine, it makes your car drive down the road. It gives you horsepower. 
when you put fire inside a lantern and carry it around, it gives you light to a room. So fire inside a container is safe. But fire outside of a container, a forest fire, a house fire, can do a lot of damage. Right. And the scripture is saying that passion, sex, that fire, the only place that it's safe is in the container that God's created of yeah. marriage. Right. Because when Good. we start allowing that fire to burn outside of the container, it can cause us a lot of problems. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. You know, the world... Um, views marriage as like just that moment when the lady wears the white dress and the guy wears the black tuxedo. They stand in front of a church or, or wherever they decided to get married in front of an altar in front of their friends and, and they perform a ceremony, right? And then they go and have a party and then they go on a honeymoon and that is this like that's the ritual marriage of marriage. Sure. Right. But as we can see it in scripture, yeah. God views marriage as that sexual relationship, yeah. that the covenant of marriage is sealed through the act of sexual intercourse. And so we have to understand that's why it's interchangeable when you read through that passage, the word marriage and the word sex, right. they can be interchanged with one another because that's the way God views sex is in the confines of marriage. You know, there's a scripture that really we hear in movies, when we're watching movies and people getting married, we, we hear at every wedding that we go to that talks and describes just what she said there. Mark 10, six through nine, it says, at the beginning of creation, God made the male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. And I think the important part of this is the understanding that comes through this scripture is that when, when you have sex, you become one. Right. So it's not just a physical act. There's an emotional connection. There's a spiritual connection. Uh, and because the Bible has it described, it says it twice. You're no longer two, but you become one. So there, there's a spiritual covenant created uh, and we'll talk about that more in detail uh, a little bit later but there's a bond a soul tie that you have with that person yeah, yeah. the next scripture says in first corinthians 7 3 the marriage bed must be a place of mutuality the husband seeking to satisfy his wife the wife seeking to satisfy her husband it's got to go both ways y'all right right that, that's what i get from the scripture right. you've got to make sure that um you're honoring and you're a gentleman to your spouse. In right. my yeah. mind, we've got to make sure that that's happening. And that way, both parties are right. satisfied during intimacy. Yeah. yeah. The scripture is saying that when you go into a sexual encounter with your wife, don't go in stingy, guys. That's right. right. That as we're going as men, we can't be a punk and just go in to meet our ultimate goal, yeah. meet our right. end. You're a punk. That we have to go. You're a punk if you <laughs> do I mean, that. You're a punk that if you're you doing that. You have to go in with her desires yeah. uh, in mind. You know, for me as a husband, my goal is to meet Rachel's needs. I work hard to pay the bills. Yeah. I work hard yeah. to take care of things around the home that she needs. And can I tell you that same work ethic, that same focus and love should be translated into the bedroom. Yeah. Right. That it's not okay. just about what I want right. out of the situation, but it's about what can I give her. That's and good, so huh? it's not just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, right. all the time. Right? right. But there has to be an intent of me going in to bring her satisfaction. And yeah. uh, to be completely honest, guys, if we go in with that, uh, idea, it's going to be better for her and better for us. Right. Because if we go yeah. in only seeking our end goal, y'all know what happens when we get there. We're ready to go to sleep, right? We're ready to take a nap. <laughs> take a nap. And so yeah. what we have to do is we have to put them first going into yeah. the moment. Good. Right. So and good. you know, um, I think Tristan talked about growing up in church. I grew up in church as well. And I think for a lot of us ladies who did, sometimes there's this idea that's presented in church that, uh, you know, that sex was created just for man's satisfaction and enjoyment and that women were supposed to submit. I've even heard people say, lay down and take it. Like, that's not true. Right. It's right. a gift from God that right. he gave for both the man and right. the woman. And ladies, we're supposed to be satisfied and enjoy our sex life with our husbands. That's the yeah. way that God designed it. And if we want to find that satisfaction, really and truly it does come yeah. from making sure they're satisfied and not having a, like a, raw, bitter kind of feeling towards it, like, oh, you want me to satisfy him? What about me? No, but understanding it's a mutuality yeah. of satisfying That's him good. and then him satisfying Right. You. I think that the church and society even has done this thing where men are supposed to want sex, but if women do, then there's something wrong. Yeah. Or the lady's like a pervert or something. Something weird. But that's right. not true. No. God gave it as a gift for both of us. So Absolutely. God gave marriage sex as a gift. 
but we give the gift to each other. Yeah. That's right. right. And yeah. so it's my job to give Rachel that gift, and it's her job to give that gift to me in our relationship. Well, yeah. and that gift's not meant to just sit on a shelf and just be available on Valentine's Day and right. anniversaries right. or yeah. like, it's not just special moments. That gift's supposed to be accessible to both yeah. of you whenever you feel that you want it. And right. so, uh, and there's a key that, that really we need to realize that we can use and have access to that, uh, that gift is really just called communication. And so you got to yeah. talk about when you want to have sex. You got to talk about how you're having sex during sex, right? right. You got to talk about the things that you like and that you don't like. Right. You got to be talk about being creative. You got to know uh, talk about when to have sex and uh, what things that you like and just talk because and communicate. Because it's kind of awkward sometimes we don't talk about it, but when right. we don't talk about something, it can't ever get better. Right. And so if you're not satisfied with it, just have a conversation. Right. Right. That's true. You know, you said communication. Talk about when to do it. There's a time and place for everything. And for us, and in the 18 years that we've been married, we found that we need to be intentional yeah. and that we understand that it's it can be seasonal right. and that sometimes we just have to schedule it. Absolutely. Like we have to build it into a hard schedule to make sure that, that, that we take time to do it. You know, as far as intentional is concerned, we need to make sure that, you know, we run hard. Right. I mean, people who see us, you know, here at this Life's church. Life's busy. Or, Life is busy. Yeah. We've got teenagers. We're running hard. Right. And sometimes that sort of thing can get lost because yeah. we're just going from one next one place to the next. And so we need to make sure the intentionality stays intact. And, and, and we've also seen in 18 years uh, seasonal changes can occur, yeah. especially yeah. when the kids were, te te you know, toddlers up to teenagers. There are times that. We hardly ever see our, each other alone. Right. You know? yeah. And so we've got to be There's a kid in your bed all the time or Absolutely. something. Absolutely. Like always something happening. And so we have to make sure that we understand the seasons of life. And, and, if, and if it's too hectic and busy, we just got to put it on schedule. Yeah, for there's it. been multiple times out. I've literally put it as a reminder in right. my phone. Like this day, this time, it will happen, y'all. Because, yeah, it's different seasons affect it differently. I mean, I think that when we had young kids, we were tired. And so, right. like, or, like, I hadn't taken a shower in a while. Like, there's different things <laughs> that happen, right, in that season. And I think we thought that, like, when we had teenagers, it would get, like, really easy and we would have all this Not freedom. Not so much. But, no, like, they stay up later than we do now. They do. And then, like, there's 14 teenagers at our house at any given moment. Yeah, we love like yesterday, there was a whole bunch of teenagers at our house. But right. come on, get out. We're, we're, right. We got something to do. <laughs> Once they leave, though, the it's alarm like, on the phone's going off. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, y'all want to go to Bahama Bucks? Yeah, y'all leave. Go, go, yeah, get out of yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. But like for <laughs> take real, your time, take you your have time. to be intentional. <laughs> Just kidding. To schedule we don't need it, that much a time. few, uh, stop, a few, <laughs> <laughs> for <Same>. Ethan, uh, <laughs> a few weeks ago we shared that like on, with we when it comes to time together, right. like Wednesday nights are our date night. Yeah, Wednesday nights we, you know, uh, Wednesday's hump day. Yeah, what happened, stop. <laughs> what? It's, it's hump day. <laughs> It's I'm not. just saying it's, it's something. It's not in the script. <laughs> Wednesday nights, our kids stop. Our kids go to youth service. <laughs> Wednesday kids, night, we have youth service. That's and so right. they bring their kids So our kids are gone. Youth. So that's our date night. But it's also our night that we're intentional, that we have time to be alone and be intimate with one another. So good. Or I think you that, you know, what <laughs> sex is, is sex is really this amazing reset button yes. in marriage. Mm -hmm. And so in the business and the chaos and the schedules, yes. I mean, it can be difficult. Yes. Yeah. Like when I'm busy and at meetings and Rachel's running the kids and her parents around, we have all these things on the to-do list. The thing that can get, get, off, get not get left off of the to-do right. list right. You is You can start sex. to feel disconnected. But, but the intimacy is a reset right. button. Yes. Yeah, you can start to feel disconnected. You need to reconnect right. to hit that reset button because it's... It really is something that when there's like strife or a heavy season or like friction in our relationship, when you hit that reset button, it kind of reminds you, oh yeah, this is home base. Yeah, usually this is where we need to be. In the years that we've been married, sometimes when there's friction, uh, we can oftentimes point back and think, man, we have not been connecting. Right. And it's been a while since we've right. connected. And that's where the friction's coming, coming from. Right. right? Yeah. So uh, what I guess we could say today is fight friction with friction. Yeah. Right. right. Fight right. the friction of life. Fight What's the friction, friction with friction? <laughs> of some relational get that? connection. You see what yeah, I'm saying? He, yeah, he, you're funny. Oh. You got it. Not but too much <laughs> friction. They sell some stuff whoa, to help whoa, with that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, Rachel, moving That's on. That's true, they do. 
We saw so it. So we're going to talk about how to do it. What's now, happening? Now, we don't want you to Google how to do it. Yeah, don't Google don't do how it. to do it. That's no, not so good. they talked about when to have sex. We're going to talk how to yeah. have sex because it's different in different seasons. Right. And so you've got to communicate and talk about how. Yeah, you got to talk about how. Like yeah. the Barths were talking about, the different seasons bring different things. And so, like, so for Rachel and I, uh, man, you got to just really understand it. When, before we had kids in that season of life, how we had sex mm -hmm. was more drawn out, mm -hmm. more yeah. intimate. We'd turn the lights down and get some candles and play some music and have flowers and all the things right. and be in all different bedrooms of the house and on the stairs and all kind of stuff. Wow. <laughs> sex, sex capade. Yeah, sex capade. <laughs> but, but then something happens, you have kids and now you're like, uh, do we have 12 minutes? Like what, what's the schedule? Right. And so the how changes as seasons change. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so that's something you have to talk about or else what happens is you start going like, man, are we losing it? Is it not as good, like, are you not attracted to me? Or right. she feels, am I not attracted to her? No, no, no. Right. it's just a different season of life. No, so you have to right. talk about the how. But the other piece of talking about how is what do you enjoy? What do you right. enjoy? What do I enjoy? What are positions that work for us? What are locations that are good for us? Mm -hmm. And so those are conversations you have to have. Like if somebody likes the shower, take the shower. Yeah, like if, if you're if you're a stay-at-home mom and you don't get a shower, ask your man to give you a shower. Right. Like, that's guaranteed once or twice a week. Right. Right. We'll never say no. No, we'll that's up. true. Man, so good. Okay, the next scripture says, marriage is not a so place good. to stand up for your rights. Marriage is a decision to serve the other, whether in bed or out. So like I said, we're looking through the message version, but in the NIV, it says it a little bit differently. It says, yield your bodies to each other and do not deprive each other of sexual relations. Yeah. You know, when you're married, um, you, there can be kinds of times of friction, times of arguments. And, you know, we've counseled several couples. The four of us yeah. hear it regularly from people, yeah. from married couples, that they use the tool of sex uh, in the wrong way. They use it as a bargaining chip or as a negotiation tactic. Leverage. They use it for leverage yeah. or as punishment, uh, withholding it from one another. They use it as a power play. But the Bible's really clear right here that we're to yield our bodies to each other right. and not deprive one another. Yeah. And so sex is not a place for manipulation really ever yeah. in your no, relationship. No. And if you find that happening in your marriage... Sex might not even be the problem. Right. If you're manipulating or withholding or using it as a bargaining chip, right. right, it's because there's a problem somewhere else. That's yeah. right. And sometimes we're trying to deal with the fruit of a matter, but we really need to dig down into the root of the matter. Like, why yeah. is this the brokenness? Yeah. What what happened? What's yeah. what's happening? No, it's so it's so true. You know, men, I'll say this. If you're feeling disconnected, sometimes you need to start stirring up something spicy in the kitchen if you want to see something spicy happening in the bedroom. Right. You need to serve your spouse. Right. Yeah. Make, you make her make dinner. dinner. Yeah. You need right. to go fill up her gas tank with her car, and then maybe you'll fill something up later. I don't know. you got to be able to do <laughs> these things. Right. Exactly. What? This yeah. is sex. Hey, yeah. we've got to make sure that Absolutely. we're honoring and we're yeah. serving in right. order for something right. to happen. I mean, with the your truth is that I've learned that the best sex toy in the house is the laundry basket. Right. <laughs> that if I just go and fold the towels yeah. and put new sheets on the True. bed, yeah. that yes. she thinks I'm 6'5 with a six pack, sexy. right? That's wow. what, yeah. yeah. No, that's and what's that's attractive, y'all. Yeah. yeah. And so there's practical things that we that we need to do. Go clean yeah. the sheets. Go clean the sheets. No, absolutely. You got to date your spouse like they're talking about. I think in the beginning, we're really intentional to have dates with our spouse yeah. like yeah. when they're not yet our spouse. You know, you go and plan these big elaborate dates. And then when you get married, it's like, well, I got you. So now I don't really have to. But right. you, you got to be intentional. When we first started dating, we would go in all these fancy dates, right? I'd take her to downtown Dallas. I'd buy flowers. And I'd dress up. Then you get married and you're like, Let's run the in and out. And yeah, and so you're burgers. not really taking care right. of no good. But in the context of marriage, you can still really take care of each other yes. through these little tasks and deeds. And so, guys, it. here's something that you have to understand. If you're mean to your wife, she's not going to want to have sex with you. Wow. Right. It's mind-blowing. Mind blowing, right? right. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> it's painfully obvious. Right. But Don't we, treat your wife So bad. what happens is, is right. we can get short and rude yeah. right, and not helpful and then she doesn't want to have sex with us. And then we say, well, you don't ever want to have sex with me. Yep. Then we're like, well, you mean to me all the time. And it's, it's this cycle, cycle right. that starts. And all we have to do is humble up yeah. and say, hey, I'm sorry I haven't done it right. Can we have a reset? Yes. 
And, but the reset for guys starts with the service, not yeah. the sex. Right. Well, and you know, ladies, if it's the same for us too. If we're rude or snippy or moody and controlling and always disappointed in them, huh. uh, or if you're just being plain crazy, he's not going to want to be intimate with you. He ain't having sex with you. And he's definitely not going to fold laundry right. for you. Right. right. No, right. you're right. You got to be... The right kind of... Yeah, it's interesting. You know, as we prepare for this last season, last Sunday of, of Marriage Mixtape, we've realized that going through the last number of weeks and talking about commitment, talking about emotions, all the feels, talking about time and how time looks like uh, when you're married, talking about words that we speak to and over our spouse, all these things can be tied to this subject. All right. these things right. are tied to sex. And so... We need to understand from a holistic approach that all of the things that we've we've talked about the last number of weeks cumulates up into yeah. this. It's so good. It really Because if, really if your sex is broken, probably one of those things is broken. No Absolutely. doubt about it. And so Absolutely. before you just blame it on her or blame it on him, maybe you both have to look back and say, man, how's our commitment? How yeah. are we managing our emotions, our Absolutely. time? Right. How are our words? Because if my yeah. words are out of line... Yeah. My sheets are not active. No, they right. are not. Right. She don't want nothing to do with me if my words no. are out of line. No, it's not. Right? True. And if her emotions are out of control, no. never mind. I don't want to deal with all fire that. Right. right, right. No, yeah. absolutely. I think the next, the very last verse says, abstaining from sex is permissible for a period of time if you both agree to it. Right. And if it's for the purposes of prayer and fasting, but only for such times. Then come back together again because Satan has an ingenious way of tempting us when we least expect it. Yeah. It's talking about like when, when is it okay to abstain from sex in your relationship? There are certain times and seasons and situations where that happens. But it says then come back together again. Another version says quickly come back together yeah. because Satan has a way of tempting us. Right. Like for me, I travel and preach. And so just this last week, I was gone all week. Monday through Friday, gone preaching a large youth camp uh, in South Texas. So that meant I wasn't with my wife. That meant I wasn't having sex, right? And so I have to make the decision, I'm going to live pure while I'm away from her. Right. And then when I get home, I understand that there's going to be this reconnection. And so yeah, I get home true. and I kick in the door and I rip my shirt off and I bang it on my chest. No. Right? Ha, no. That is not what, that's not what I do. What you don't do I get, that. I get home and I love her and that's I talk right. about my week and I hug the kids yep. yeah. and we connect. And then after that, we're able to hit the reset button. Right. right. Yeah. And so there's not this gap of distance that's created. No, yes. and I think if you go into all of this with an understanding that there's going to be times where you're not going to be connected. You know, there are times that are going to be heavy seasons that you're emotionally not okay or physically not okay, uh, but you've got to be int intentional to stay connected and make a uh, point to be connected. You know, 1 Corinthians 7, 5 says, not, uh, but only in such times, then come back together again. So when we're disconnected, we have to be intentional to connect, right? And it's, sometimes it's not just sexual inter intercourse. It's not. You can play around with your husband and, your, right. you know, and you've got to figure out what, what they like. What can you do physically if one of you is injured or emotionally? What is it that you need? You may just need to be held you right. know, for a season. And so you've got to communicate. I know when we first got married, we lost a lot of weight you know, to try to look really good in pictures. Right. And then after we got married, we were starving, y'all. And so we, <laughs> we gained a lot of weight. <laughs> and so we had to communicate of like, wait, my rock solid abs turned into like loaves of bread. <laughs> and so we had to figure out like how to maneuver and yeah. all the things. But can I tell you that in all of that, if we wouldn't have communicated, it would have been really awkward really fast. Yeah. And it's very important to know that in that time where your life is disconnecting you, you've got to be intentional to right. connect and talk and communicate. Yeah. I it's think true. for us in 18 years, like Actually, the, the 12 minutes that we have sometimes together is more passionate and fiery than it was back when we had time for candles and, you know, music and all the things. Because all we the communicate. Things. We know what now, each other likes. Right. Now once. we know each other so <laughs> yeah. well because we're intimate yeah. and intentional to reconnect. Absolutely. So people have 
sexual issues and they'll just think, well, I'm gonna step outside the marriage or let's just get a divorce and cut the thing off. When really, when you're with somebody and you learn to deal with what Aaron was talking about, commitment and time and emotions right. and communication, when you're able to really manage those, this sexually is so much better. It works. Absolutely. It's a whole level of trust. Absolutely. Rachel knows me. Right. And so like we're able to understand each other. The second half of that verse, uh, verse five, it says that Satan, the enemy, he has an ingenious yeah. way of tempting us when we least expect it. You know, the enemy, he tries to tempt us and take from us the gift that God's given us. And so we live in a world of temptation. If right, you yeah. turn on the television, there's temptation. If you walk down the street, there's temptation. If you work in an office with other human beings, there's temptation. Absolutely. Like, it's just out there. And guys, I mean, we have eyes in our head. We are attracted through what we see. And so we have to be very aware of what we're looking at and what we're longing for. Right. You know, I've heard it said that you can't help the first look, but you can help the second look. And so uh, for me, in my younger years, pornography was a real temptation in my life. And so I found myself looking at things that I shouldn't have been looking at. And now, porn, it's rampant. It's yeah. everywhere. Growing yeah. up, if I wanted to see a picture of a naked lady, I had to leave my house, go to my neighbor's house, hope that his older brother wasn't home, find a magazine under a bed, and then look at one wrinkled up page of a Playboy, right. hope we didn't get caught. Right. But the world we live in now, I mean, it's at your fingertips at any moment. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was reading some statistics about pornography that really blew me away. Um, in 2018 alone, um, on just from one website, they reported that people had viewed 5 billion, 500,000, or 5 billion, 500 million hours of pornography. Over 5.5 billion hours. In That's crazy. One billion. website one in website. one year. Unreal. So you divide that out by how many Americans there are, 327 million Americans. That means every American on average is watching 17 hours of pornography per year. I mean, it's shocking. This one website said that per day that they get 64 million visits. Wow. wow. So there's big money in pornography. They're selling it to us. Right. And so right. we have to be aware of that. And it's never been so accessible. 72% of pornography is viewed on a mobile device. Wow. So it's not like desktops anymore. It's on mobile phones. Right. Wow. And so next time somebody hands you their phone, be like, no, no, no thanks. No, I don't want to touch that. I don't want to touch that. But man, it's really important. Uh, a recent st uh, stat that was taken from high schoolers is that high schoolers think that it's more important to recycle than it is to not look at pornography. They think that it's better to look at porn if, as long as you're recycling. Like, it's right, shocking the, the shocking mindset shift that we, yeah. that we live in. And so oh, really? you might sit there and say, well, Pastor, what's the big deal? Looking at porn isn't hurting anybody. It's not hurting anybody. It's just me and this device, and it's not hurting anybody. But I would really argue with you and say that it is hurting in some big ways. It's hurting you physically, and it's hurting you mentally. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're pleasuring yourself watching something visually, what you're doing is you're giving your vitality to something other than your spouse. Right. And so now, if you're giving your energy there, you're not giving your energy here. And so this connection point, this unification, it starts to dissipate because you don't need that yeah. anymore. And that's yeah. dangerous. Right. Um, there's this epidemic now of guys in their 30s that have erectile dysfunction. It's not a physical problem. It's a psychological problem. Yeah. Right. Because what's happening is all these guys in their 30s are looking at this pornography so consistently that when they're with a real woman, they're not satisfied. Right. Because pornography is like cocaine. It's like this super stimulant that we put into our system, and then we wonder why we're not aroused with somebody else. Right. And so we have to yeah. really guard our mind and guard our heart because pornography, it destroys, it destroys reality. Yeah. Right. Because I have a beautiful wife, right? Thank but if I watch pornography, one person cannot compete with all of the visual stimulation right. that you can see. Yeah. Because in pornography, you can look at different uh, ages, and you can look at different body types and different nationalities, right. doing a bunch of different things. You got a bunch of sex Olympics on there doing a bunch of freaky stuff, right? <laughs> right. And so it's not fair. Right. No. And so our, our expectation becomes so jaded that I've counseled with guys who've been married for two years, and their sex life is broken but it has nothing to do with their physical body or her no, physical body. No. It's because their expectation 
It's like, well, dude, what, what did you think was about to happen? Yeah, right. your, your spouse yeah. cannot measure up to the electrifying whatever your stimulant you're seeing on right. on a device. On and nor, nor should they. No. Because no. No, as their not. porn creators are creating content to be sold, right. it's not intimate, man. No. no. There's very little body actual touching. There's right. just, they're trying to get camera shots. Absolutely. Yeah. And so it's very far from and what you, reality is. you hear is. it on the radio. You hear it in the news. I mean, one in three men suffer from erectile dysfunction. I hear it on the radio every every time I have it on, ESPN, at least. And so yeah. it's, it, it, you, it's constant. You're hearing it. But I challenge those one in three, if they stop doing you know, doing that and looking at porn and, and act, you know, activating themselves in that way and just focus on their wife for a month. Yeah. You ain't going to have no erectile dysfunction. Right. right. I'm just saying, yeah. right. you got to focus on what you're supposed to be focused on, not right. things that are happening outside yeah. of your marriage. And so I know that's super awkward to talk about, but we have to be aware of the society that we live in and the attack right. that we're in. And Absolutely. the truth is, it's not just an attack against men anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. When, the, when the stats and the numbers are this staggering, right. we can't not talk about right. it. Right, we have Absolutely. to. And I think, you know, a lot of times when you hear uh, people talk about porn as an issue, we think of it as a man issue. And the truth is it's not. Like, right. as a woman, it's something that you can easily struggle with. It's something I've had to be really intentional to guard my heart and my mind from. Whether it's looking at web websites or whether it's, you know, there's videos and books now that are movies that are created just for that satisfaction yeah, content for women. Right. You know, my grandma growing up watched those soap operas. You know, if I was at her house anytime between noon and three, I knew the playlist of what was going to be Them on the steamy television. steamy soaps. Right, but... It, they're really out of hand nowadays. Yeah. If you go on and watch yeah, them, like it. it's like porn on television. And I would go as far as to say, I'm not saying the show is pornography, but watching The Bachelor can super skew your expectations. Excuse your reality. It excuse yeah. what reality is. 26 girls making out with one dude. And then like, why didn't you take me on a helicopter ride <laughs> to the Bahamas and then give me rubies and right. diamonds and like perfect champagne? Like, what? That's not that's real. Normal. Like, it's no. not a real uh, expectation, <laughs> right, right. but you can start to, your mind and your heart can start to go to places it shouldn't, and then they can never live up to something that's a false reality anyway. You know, it could lead to awkwardness. You know, if, if, if these things are happening, you're watching these types of things, it can. It can lead to awkwardness, especially if, if something went bad in an intimate moment with right. your spouse or uh, you just haven't done it in a while right. uh, and been intimate with your spouse. And so that awkwardness leads to distance. Yeah. It starts leading to, to going different directions right. in a relationship. And that's where it gets real dicey, and you have to be aware and communicate. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, you've got to fight through the awkwardness yeah, of it all, talk sure. about it. And if you can't find a place of safety again with, with each other, then it's time to go seek counseling and yeah. find help that will help you both navigate through all of that. And Absolutely. counseling doesn't mean that you're a mess. It means that you're no. wise. Yeah. Rach Absolutely. and I are in counseling consistently right. because life's hard sometimes. There's yeah. a lot of things that come up. And We've so what, gone to counseling specifically for our sex life yeah. in different season shifts, different life adjustments to like help us have like the right expectation and the right communication right. about it. It's super important. Right, because as guys, life is busy sometimes. Yeah. This is something right. Aaron and I have talked about that he has a high pressure job that I have a job that keeps me busy in my mind going all the time. Right. And even when we were doing this building renovation, man, I was so preoccupied that I came home and my mind was not on her. Right. My mind was not on sex. And so Rachel's was going, does he not think I'm attractive? Does he not want to have anything to do with me? Is he cheating on me? Right. And I'm going, man, do I have testosterone problems? Is something right. wrong with me? No, man, my mind was preoccupied. Yeah, right. my mind's burned out at the end of the day after a busy, busy day, a heavy, enduring heavy season. And I come home and after making hundreds of decisions, I, I have to communicate with her. I found that if I don't communicate with her, then those are the types of questions she's yeah. asking. Yeah. What's wrong with me? What's, why does he not want to be with me? Right. And it's not that. It's it's simply that I, I, mean, I just don't have it any. My tank is empty. Right. right. And so you have to communicate that. And so 20-year-old Trustin would have sat here and thought, no man, way. this is never going to be me. Right. But right. then he, that's because I didn't have any real responsibilities that's, in life. Right. Exactly yeah. right. And so the, all these things, like Aaron said, they can lead to awkward yeah. moments. So maybe you were having sex and there was an awkward moment that happened and so it created distance or maybe you're here and you know when as we're talking about sex the only thing that's running through your mind is that you want to have a child you want to have a baby and you can't 
And so now sex has turned from something that's intimate into something mm -hmm. that is functional. Mm -hmm. And so right. you have a timer and a schedule and you're trying to get pregnant. And so I've had really close friends that have went through that and it has really hurt their sex life yeah. because it got awkward now because we well, do so it here, do it. there's all this pressure. Yeah. Yeah. And then even if they have the baby or they, they don't have a baby or whatever, there's still this awkwardness that exists. And so first, if that's happened to you, I'm super sorry yeah. that you walked through that. But sex is for more than, than just yeah. the birth of a child. Right. Sex is a gift of intimacy. It's a gift of intimacy. Absolutely. You have to fight through the awkwardness in order to right. reconnect and hit the reset. And, yeah. you know, we live in a fallen world. Um, where there is sexual disorder and w when you allow sex to exist in your life outside the container of marriage, man, things can start to get troublesome. Yeah. yeah. It can start to cause problems Absolutely. all over the place. For sure. You know, before I was married to Whitney, there were some decisions that I made uh, with myself, sexual relationships that I had had. And can I tell you, it was a big hurdle to get over right. when I got married to Whitney. Yeah. It was something we had to communicate through, and it took a while. Yeah. I remember it took a while, and it's something that if I could go back and change that, I would do it in a heartbeat. Right. Yeah. I would do it in a heartbeat. No uh, physical moment was worth the emotional baggage and pain that wow. I had to carry into my new marriage with my wife. Right. And so Fortunately, by the grace of God and the grace of my wife, yeah. right. we were able to clear that hurdle, but it, it took a while. Yeah. And it wasn't easy right. at all. Absolutely. And so if you're single, what would your advice to be if someone's single? Yeah, for sure if you're single. My, my advice would be to wait. It's worth the wait. Right. It's so worth the wait. And, and, and so if you could save yourself, that would be my biggest thing to say to them. And if you haven't, it's okay. Just know that you've got to make sure that you operate within the guidance and the confines of what the Bible is yeah. saying in order to have a good, healthy, right. intimate relationship. With and so we don't see Today's that. Today's a new day. Yeah, we don't see that to create condemnation. No. Not at all. But just draw a line in the sand and say, this right. is who I was, but this is who I am now. Exactly. And today, on this date, I'm choosing second virginity. Absolutely. That I'm leaving who I was and I'm stepping into somebody new. Yeah, it's yeah. super good. You know, for me, it was a very similar story. I was a broken girl who didn't have my father around, so I didn't have that connection and love and assurance daily and I found myself seeking out relationships for that acceptance and that love and the yeah. feeling of feeling valued and can I tell you that at one at some point I found myself connected to all these people that I had had relationships with it was like I was standing uh I was I, I envisioned myself standing holding on to these ropes of of these people's souls that I had connected with. And yeah. I had so many that I didn't feel healthy. I didn't feel like I could clearly walk into a relationship um, where I was whole. Right. Because I, I had all these soul ties attached that I had made the decision to attach myself to them. And can I tell you, God doesn't want us to walk in bondage like that. Right. right. God wants us to walk through deliverance and walk in freedom Absolutely. from that. Right. And, you know, I, I'm... I sought out what that, how to even do that. How do I get rid of these people that I'd made soul ties with? How do I break those? And it's not even that you were talking with them. No. You hadn't talked to them in no. years. No, they were out of my life, but we had been intimate. We, right. And so I'd created a soul tie There's with There's not them. really so such thing as a one-night stand. Right. No. We, we say one-night stand or we say a friend with benefits or whatever, and we think that it's just for that season. But the truth is, though the physical action is gone, the emotional and spiritual right. connection yeah. is still there. And that's still what there. soul tie means. Right. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah, and so and I, I was able to pray a simple prayer because that's what God asks us to do. You know, yeah. we have the same authority that raised Jesus Christ from the dead to pray and ask to be free and delivered. And right. what God does is he just does that. He yeah. deliver, right. delivers and frees you. And so right. what we're going to do later today in a little bit, we're going to pray through that. And if you have a soul tie with somebody that may be hindering you and your relationship, and it's not a holy soul tie, can we're going to pray through that. And today we're going to walk in deliverance of that and those people and, and be free. And I think the freedom piece is something that we need to understand isn't only for the person with the soul tie, but is the person that's now in a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And so what we have to do is if your spouse <clears throat> did something or made mistakes in their past, you have to be willing to forgive them yeah. now. Yeah. And, and understand a soul tie, what, we, what Rachel talks about, is, is something of God. It's something uh, physical, obviously, emotional, 
and spiritual. And so it's strong. It's a bond, and it's something uh, for good is a powerful thing. Right. A soul tie between me and my wife is a strong, strong bond that that is is a, a huge asset. Right. It's the in way God intended it. Absolutely. Absolutely, it is. And so it's a positive thing. But if if misused, right. I guess Rachel was saying it could be a challenge and you know almost like baggage that you're carrying with you Absolutely. for a long, a long but time. But I think that's what's so powerful in the breaking of the soul ties is that um, because our souls are tied to each other, when he broke the soul ties in his life, the two became one flesh, right? And so I had to break those soul ties too. Yeah. They were no longer his and they were no longer mine. And so when he cut them, that means I cut them. And so in your relationship, maybe it's something that happened before you were married. Maybe it's something that happened in marriage. But if your spouse is now a new person, a new creation, you said in one service, uh, that Rachel was not my Rachel, right? right? And so, like, Rachel made a 15 year old Rachel who right. made mistakes is not the woman that I'm Absolutely. married to today. And, right. that's and so, so it's not fair for me to judge her right. or to bring up mistakes from the past. I have to be forgiving. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And that's the same for you. And so, your spouse of that day is not your spouse today. And so, you have to cut the ties too. And so, ladies, if you're in here and your husband made choices before that wasn't wasn't wise, wasn't good, but now he's a new man. You have to cut those and let them go and don't bring them back up again. Yeah. Yeah. Let it go because if he's a new man today, whether it's been two weeks, two months, two years, or two decades, right. you've got to move forward into what God has for you. The yeah. enemy only wants to hold us back. He only wants to keep us tied to what was before, but we want to move forward into everything God has for us. And so just stop it. Like, don't let it come up again. Make a commitment when we pray today to break the soul ties. Maybe they're not, you don't feel like your own, but when you're in a covenant of marriage, they are. And they so are, break right. them and right. pray that today and let it go and move forward. Yeah. So we want to pray over that. So would you guys stand with us this afternoon? Uh, we want to pray over everybody in the house that any uh, decisions or mistakes that may have been made in the past, that you would know that God loves you and he yeah. desires to forgive you and that we can move forward. You know, the Bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. So when you speak out this prayer, you're declaring with your mouth the power of Christ to break these ties yeah. of your past. Uh, so let's bow our heads and close our eyes. And here at Living Church, we all pray together right. because we're all together in this. We're not going to single anyone out. So as I pray, will you all repeat this prayer after me? And let's watch God deliver us. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, you paid the price for me. You, you paid, paid the, the price, price for me. To be free in every way. To be free in every way. So I receive your gift of freedom. So I receive your gift of freedom. I choose to be free today. I choose to be free today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I break every unholy soul tie. I break every unholy soul tie. Those ties that do not belong to me. Those ties that do not belong to me. I release them today. I I release, release them, them today. today. From this day forward. From, from this, this day, day forward, forward. I release myself from them. I release, I release myself, myself from, from them. them. And I walk confidently. And I walk, walk confidently. In the freedom that you have given in me. The freedom, the freedom you've, you've given, given me. me. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, Jesus thank, thank you. For setting me free. For setting me free. And filling me with your Holy Spirit. And filling, filling me with your Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Thank you for your redeeding love. Thank, thank you for your redeeming love. That cleanses me and sets me free. That cleanses me and sets me free. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.